help me. I scream out to the infinite void, hoping you'll hear me. I can't hear you, can't see you, working wonders in those who claim you communicate with them through thoughts, prayers, experience, and experiences, encounters, guiding them. In their mind's eye, they think you're something else, someone entirely other, somewhere else beyond the measureless mass of their mind, somehow apart, yet somehow infused to the higher nature of their own will, the noble part of their own desires. Their creeds are like iron gates. They've got their mental, moral boundaries serving as concrete walls, and you're lodged in their own private castle as a permanent fixture. What they've been told and what they've accepted is who you've come to be in their matrix of reality, to step outside their perception, to acknowledge their part in the creation of you within themselves, the constant friend who comforts, the invisible shoulder to cry on, the ears that will always listen, this they cannot do. It is too painful to give up emotional security. Why do I call out in desperation to this figment of my imagination as others do? Why do I think you'll hear me or care? If you are real, why have you betrayed my trust? Have you not the ability to speak truth to my mind? Have you willed my fondness for you to turn into obsession? Why have you allowed my passion for you to transform into madness? I thought you would come through for me. I thought you would rescue me and set me free from the evils of the world. I believed you would lift me into the air and declare me as your vessel to the world. I cried out, here I am, Lord, use me. And a voice responded deep within my soul. My child, you shall be my voice on this earth. You shall fight evil and injustice and prepare the way for my return. I said, please don't delude me, Lord. I only seek the truth. And you sent visions to my eyes and feelings reverberated through my entire body to confirm in my heart and my mind that you were with me and this was real. And so I went on in a circle of madness, deluded by my own mind with all the strength and energy I possessed. I fought against enemies that weren't there, making more enemies in the process. I imagined satanic conspiracies the whole world over. And in times of confusion, I turned to the only thing I believed to be real, the Holy Bible. And in doing so, sunk ever further into my madness. I cried out for deliverance from demons, even Satan himself. For the manifestation of my irrational beliefs was creating a hell on earth for me. Because I thought I needed a savior, I created a need within myself for a savior. Where was this savior when I really needed him? Why didn't this savior intervene in my life and tell me I was not God's end time prophet, that I should just relax and focus on living? Those who believe a war is being waged for their very soul, a tug of war between God and Satan, will find nothing but heartache and trauma through most of their life because they are creating war within themselves through their very own beliefs. There is no peace in war, real or imagined. Give up the war and go for a nature hike or cook a nice meal for yourself or someone else or paint a picture or try out for a play or write a song or make love to your sweetheart. Once you forget about the evil forces trying to entice you and focus on the good things in life, You'll forget there was ever a war at all. In what I have said, I'm not suggesting that God never communicates. I think God communicates generally, but not specifically. His love can be found in the remotest of places. His wisdom and power are demonstrated throughout the cosmos. Individuals can interpret that love in many different ways, and they can also express that love to one another, be they religious or not. But people must judge from their experience. What else do they have to judge by? And in my experience, personal contact with the creator of the universe may not necessarily be trusted due to the fallibility of our senses, not only our physical senses, but our sense of reason as well. I have never had a reason to mistrust my eyes before, but in the midst of a very spiritual experience, I had visions of the future that were presented to my eyes as real, as if something were standing five feet in front of me in clear daylight. At the time, I was thoroughly convinced the vision was from God, 
and it was a clear sign that I would be delivered in a miraculous way from the per persecution I was then enduring. It took me a long time to realize that what I had seen was nothing more than a hallucination brought on by great stress and my own expectations. And I imagine many people in the history of the world, especially those great religious figures of antiquity, may have had similar delusions brought on by great stress. My delusions of grandeur were inspired by my obsession over the Bible. Does God communicate to you through your thoughts, feelings, and impulses? Is that how you hear God's voice? Or does God communicate to you through your circumstances? If this is the case, then how do you know God isn't communicating to you just as surely through a rape, or a car accident, or a hurricane, as through the birth of your child, or a wonderful conversation with a friend, or a beautiful sunset? Doesn't the Bible say that God is both the author of good and evil? Doesn't God say in the Bible that he will laugh at the calamity of his people Israel because they have turned their backs on him? How do you know you can trust these thoughts and feelings or circumstances that you believe God is using to speak to you? If you have an opinion on the matter, I'd love to hear it. Post a video response and let others know what you think. How does God communicate with us? Let's hear your story.